For the first time, the city of Overland Park is releasing the details of the resignation deal inked with an officer who shot and killed a teen in 2018. This comes after a judge ruled the record should be open. You may remember John Albers. He was shot and killed by a police officer at his parents' home in Overland Park more than three years ago. Officer Clayton Jennison shot Albers while the teen was backing out of the driveway at his family's home. Police dash cam shows that moment when Albers backed out of the driveway. The Johnson County District Attorney said Jennison was justified in shooting the teen. I-team reporter Kat Reed is joining us live from Overland Park to break down, Kat, what we're learning about this agreement. That's right, Dia. As we first reported last June, the officer from Overland Park who killed that teen was paid thousands in severance pay as part of his agreement to leave the department. But the document released today is raising a lot more questions for John Albers' mother. These are records Sheila Albers has been waiting to see for almost a year. Ever since she learned Clayton Jennison, the officer who killed her son, was paid $70,000 as part of a deal to resign. I was stunned. I, I, I'm like, you have got to be kidding me that that officer shot and killed my son and then he was paid to leave. And I, it just kind of unraveled from there. The Kansas City Star sued for the severance agreement and a judge ruled on Thursday that it should be released. It was signed less than a month after John Albers was shot and killed. One line in particular caught Sheila's eye. It has to do with the Kansas Commission on Peace Officers Standards and Training, which controls licensing of police officers. As part of the severance agreement, the police department agreed to report Jennison's separation to Seapost as a voluntary resignation under ordinary circumstances and for personal reasons. There was nothing ordinary about Jennison's exit from Overland Park Police Department. And he didn't voluntarily resign. We know that. Sheila Albers referenced a statement in this list of frequently asked questions, which the city released on Friday with the resignation and severance agreement. One question reads, did Officer Jennison approach the city for this deal or did the city initiate it? The answer, the city felt it was in the best interest of the community that Jennison no longer be an officer in our community. The city approached Jennison through his attorney to initiate a discussion, but ultimately the terms were mutually negotiated. By checking that box that it was a voluntary resignation, then C-Post would have no reason to revoke his license which then allows him to go to another municipality or another state to to work. The city argues it made that choice because Jennison was not being investigated when he entered into the agreement and the city wasn't contemplating and had no knowledge that any other agency was contemplating investigative, disciplinary or legal actions against Jennison when he resigned. The city also points out the DA did not find probable cause to charge Jennison and Seapost did not take action against him. But Albers hopes the release of this agreement shines light on what she calls backroom deals to sweep away police misconduct. When we have an officer who makes an egregious mistake, that needs to be dealt with head on in an honest way. Um, because when we don't do that, we jeopardize public safety. And we also jeopardize the profession of policing because we're continuing to hold on to people who probably shouldn't be police officers. We checked the Seapost website today and did not find any disciplinary action taken against Jennison. Now, we also reached out to the executive director. We were curious if it's standard procedure or, or typical for employers to talk to employees about how that form is going to be filled out in terms of a voluntary resignation or an involuntary one. Uh, the executive director did not comment specifically on this case, but he said each agency handles these things differently. I'm I-team reporter Kat Reed, 41 Action News. Kat, thanks for that report tonight. 41 Action News also filed a lawsuit seeking information from the Officer Involved Shooting Investigation Team, or OSIT report. It details what unfolded the night of that deadly shooting and has not been released to the public. The city is asking for that lawsuit to be dismissed, but a judge has not ruled on the motion yet.